Professor Inouye, who will give us now a practical approach on the diagnosis of early esophageal squamous cell cancer. Please, Haro. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's my great honor to be invited. I try my best to make everything simple. Why, why uh, should we detect intramucosal cancer in the uh, endoscopic examination? The answer is very simple. Intramucosal cancer has the uh, very low risk of lymph node metastasis. So once cancer invades into submucosal layer, 40% uh, and more risk of lymph node metastasis in the esophagus. And the treatment option is uh, totally different. In intramucosal cancer, we can uh, resect the region, EMR, ESD. Uh, but the, uh, once cancer invaded to submucosal layer, we have to resect the region, um, surgery, and plus chemo radiotherapy. So, of course, um, uh, intramucosal cancer, we have uh, M1, M2, M3. Uh, sometimes we perform this procedure uh, as a total biopsy, and then I send a specimen to the pathologist and they request to evaluate the um, uh, vessel invasion, a lymphatic invasion, a vascular invasion, so uh, to make a final decision uh, to the patient treatment. Uh, anyway, so um, major, one of the major benefit uh, of the EMR ESD is to uh, we can get uh, the complete histological evaluation for the specimen. So everybody knows uh, this is a very simple morphological classification of the early uh, stage cancer. So zero, this, this is a Paris classification, zero two to A to B to C. It's a very subtle uh, elevation or depression of the surface. Such kind of lesion is uh, generally linked to a uh, mucosal lesion. And then uh, once uh, uh, lesion is uh, very protruded or very excavated at the time, so uh, a more risk uh, of a deep invasion. Okay, so why do we need a magnifying endoscopy for diagnosis of squamous cell carcinoma? Uh, like this. So in the, um, um, this is the uh, char characteristic feature of the squamous epithelium in the esophagus. So oh, one of the most important point is uh, no pit pattern. So squamous epithelium is not the glandular epithelium, so uh, we don't have, they don't have the uh, pit pattern. But, so squamous epithelium generally has a good transparency so we can see the uh, vasculature uh, beneath the epithelium. So anatomical landmark of the uh, uh, magnifying endoscopy in the squamous esophagus is the same to anus. Anus canal is also the same. <laughs> but anyway, so IPCL um, is the, uh, one of the good indicator. Um, IPCL is like, like this, um, uh, starting branching vessel, it's a uh, uh, disseminate at the level of the uh, um, muscularis mucosa, horizontally spread. And the, from a branching vessel, IPCL is a vertically coming up to the surface of the epithelium. So uh, we can uh, very roughly classify like this. So non-neoplastic uh, findings and the intramucosal cancer. So we have M1, M2, M3, and then uh, SM massive invasion, um, IPCL was totally, it's totally destroyed and uh, deformed. So I myself, a long time ago, I reported the uh, uh, IPCL using magnifying endoscopy prototype at the time. That was uh, 20 years ago. Time goes very fast. <laughs> uh, this is the uh, schema at the time over 20 years ago. So at the time, we don't have NVI. Just using the white light magnifying endoscopy, uh, I, I, I imagine this is uh, just the image of the superficial vasculature of the uh, squamous uh, 
the surface, like this. Okay, so um, this is also the picture from the original paper. Um, I, th I remember this magnifying endoscopy has a 115 fold magnifying power. And the left hand side, you can recognize hopefully a loop like vessel. This is the IPCL, intrapapillary capillary loop. Uh, this is a um, immunochemistry. Uh, we can identify like a yellow in the epithelium, so in the papilla, so small capillary artery is uh, coming up and then down, creating a loop form. In a magnifying endoscopy, we can identify the IPCL like this. So green, horizontally spread green vessels are their uh, branching vessels. And from branching vessels, our IPCL is a vertically, vertically um, coming up to the surface of the uh, esophagus. The reason why uh, we have to, we have to uh, use this IPCL as an indicator of our um, uh, atypia uh, is uh, like this. In the case of a carcinoma in situ, uh, IPCL will change uh, to uh, like uh, light side. So dilation and the curving and also a caliber change and, and the finally uh, shape of the uh, IPCL uh, have a lots of variation. Uh, this is the, um, this is the uh, non neoplastic uh, view of the squamous epithelium using uh, 80 times magnifying NBI. So this is a case of a uh, uh, M1 carcinoma in situ. We can identify the uh, front, so border of the tumor, and then uh, in the in the region we can identify a small dot. This is the uh, changed IPCL. Uh, this is a case of a small lesion in the pharynx. So white alloys demonstrate the uh, uh, lesion. So in a magnifying end endoscopy uh, with the NBI, we can identify the region like this. So lots of uh, vascular proliferation, we can identify it like this. And then um, uh, earlier, earlier formation is a f uh, one of the uh, most important uh, factor to be a tumor. So we perform a resection uh, for this region and uh, our histological diagnosis was a squamous cell carcinoma in situ. So um, uh, roughly speaking, we, this is a very simple uh, classification, non-neoplastic, intramucosal, and the submucosal cancer. Yeah, of course, uh, uh, in the Western world, intramucosal cancer, you, co you called you call this one the high-grade dysplasia. Um, this is, this is the um, um, very important uh, work, uh, calculate the uh, measure, measure, measure the diameter, outer diameter of the vessels. In a normal, um, we, class, we um, compare the three um, lesions, so non-neoplastic lesion, mucosal cancer, and the submucosal cancer. Uh, the diameter of the vessel is uh, totally different. In a normal IPCL, the size of the uh, uh, vessel is uh, seven micron, approximately. Seven micron is uh, almost equal to the size of the red blood cell. And then uh, intramucosal cancer, three times larger. And then three red blood cell can pass through uh, parallel. And then submucosal cancer, the large new tumor vessel exposed to the surface, then uh, we can recognize a very large abnormal vessels. This is my first classification. So I, 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 I think it's a good classification, but <laughs> too much, too much um, complicated, precise, too much precise. Uh, the Japanese is always, <laughs> always uh, too much uh, precise. 
then so now uh, we make it um, a little bit simple. So type A is a non-neoplastic and the type B is a neoplastic and the B1, B2 is a, a loop and non-loop and then a B3 is a large tumor vessel. So like this, this is a non-neoplastic non um, esophageal mucosa. So you can see very nice um, uh, blanching vessel and then uh, very, uh, very fine, fine and the smooth lining arrangement of the IPCLs. This is the uh, normal mucosa. Uh, this is a case of a, a carcinoma in situ. You can see abnormal vessels. And the third one, third one is the most important. This is a, what we call B3, SM, SM massive invasive cancer. We can identify the uh, green, um, this one. Center of the region, we can identify green abnormal vessels. Uh, this is uh, very typical for sub massive submucosal invasive cancer. Okay, we will skip. And then, so once again like this. So normal mucosa is like this. And then uh, uh, M1, M2, M3, a little bit different, gradually IPCL, um, gradually, gradually destroyed, but still most of them keep, uh, keep the shape of a loop, original loop shape, still keep. The finally uh, M3 and the SM1 lesion sometimes uh, lose the shape, original uh, loop shape. And then uh, SM massive cancer, um, uh, this is the uh, uh, originally a branching vessel was also involved in the tumor. And then uh, this part, upper part of the uh, submucosal cancer um, uh, dropped off, and then uh, submucosal cancer tissue exports to the surface. Maybe this mechanism is the uh, same to the colon. So Dr. Kudo's 5N, amorphism is a similar phenomenon. So I, I think the similarity in a uh, GI tract. Okay. Ah. I will skip <laughs> this uh, background coloration is uh, also uh, important, but, but the, uh, too much. So I will skip a little bit. And then uh, <coughs> this is a diagnostic process. Regular endoscopy. Regular endoscopy is a um, uh, detection of the region. So using NBI, we can uh, detect the region uh, as a brownish area. And then after uh, pick up the region, uh, we perform magnifying endoscopy and then evaluate the uh, uh, structure at here. Uh, indicator is the vascular change. And then finally, uh, this is the uh, near future, is a, a evaluation of a cytological atypism. Uh, I would like a very shortly, very shortly, I would like to introduce the endocytoscope. Uh, using our double, our crystal violet and the mesoderm blue double staining, we can get the uh, uh, this kind of uh, image in the uh, during endoscopic examination. We can we can see a nucleus, cell body, and the nucleus, and then simply uh, we can classify non-neoplastic uh, dysplasia and then uh, cancer according to the uh, uh, particularly changes of a nucleus. Uh, this is the uh, normal, so compact nuclei and the uh, uh, cytoplasm rich. In the case of a squamous cell carcinoma like this, uh, blurred, enlarged blurred nuclei, uh, we can observe it. So this is a last, last case, uh, could you find the case? Could you find the region on this image? Very tiny region. Region is here. Okay. NVI. NVI is very nice to identify the region. And then uh, this region size is uh, one millimeter. So this white ball 
is the size is one millimeter. Okay, so two more size. Nah, 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 not yet, nobody knows. Brownish area, size is one millimeter. And then magnifying endoscopy with white light. We can recognize the region a little bit better than before here. And then NBI, we can clearly identify the region. And then we perform the uh, uh, encytoscopic <laughs> evaluation. Um, this is a background, the right hand side, the uh, uh, one millimeter tumor. In an end site scope, um, before performing end site scope, honestly speaking, I think this region is a carcinoma. But, so uh, this region is a uh, cellularity increases, but the uh, nucleus is a totally same size. So I think uh, this region is not uh, carcinoma. So anyway, we perform the uh, mucosal resection. Two more sizes, one millimeter, so very easy. To, so this, this kind of very small region. And then uh, histology demonstrate like this. It's a very difficult to make diagnosis in this region, and histologically also very difficult. Some atyp atypia, uh, we can say. So um, MIB-1 uh, leveling index increases, but the P53, uh, not so much. So um, this is a final diagnosis in our, uh, our pathologist diagnosis like this, uh, squamous uh, uh, intra-epsilon neoplasia, high grade, but I think this is a low grade. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and the finally, finally, this is a very, very last slide. So this is also a one millimeter tumor in the pharynx of the patient. So lesion is here. So once again, one millimeter ball. We can recognize the uh, uh, NBI image, proliferation of vessel. And then we took biopsy uh, for this region. And then uh, histology is a typical squamous cell carcinoma of the surface. So like this, Yeah, like this, so we can evaluate the uh, uh, lesion using the uh, encytoscopy uh, near future. But, so coming back to the first, most important is the um, very simple recognition. Um, Non-neoplastic region has uh, no, uh, no, no special change of the uh, indicator, vessel. And then uh, intramucosal cancer still keeps the original shape but some irregularity. That is the uh, intramucosal cancer. And then some mucosal in invasive cancer is a really a cancer. So destructive, so previous original uh, structure has already been gone. So that is the uh, uh, basic character of the region. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Haru, for this uh, nice overview.